This video is brought to you by AMD. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're taking a final look at the recently released Ghost Recon Breakpoint and seeing how it compares visually to the previous entry to the series, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now, to avoid retreading the same ground here, we're going to investigate a few different aspects that weren't touched on before, including the vehicles, a more in-depth look at the character and animation quality, and an extended look at the available environments. But if you'd like to learn about Breakpoint's unique new gameplay features, including the new RPG-based tier loot design, I'll be covering that in greater detail with my final review later this week. Alright, so to kick this comparison off, let's start by taking another look at the character models. Once again, I tried my best to match up the character creation tool in both games exactly, with a similar facial structure, hair, and clothing. Using the available photo mode options in both games, we can now see the characters much more clearly, and with more consistent background lighting. Here, we can easily observe the significant improvement to the character model quality. Nomad in Breakpoint features plenty of subtle wrinkles shadowing along the jawline and a more natural, shaggy looking beard. Nomad in Wildlands looks noticeably worse, with plain textures, less polygons, and an overall simpler looking design. Next, let's revisit the character animations, and take a closer look at how player animations have changed. A lot of you noted that the animations in Breakpoint look strange, especially when traveling up and down hills, so I decided to investigate this a little more carefully than before. First, the animations here have been completely redone. Breakpoint's characters now always have a weapon in hand when traveling out in the world, whereas before, players could easily holster their weapon, resulting in a slightly more zoomed out camera and more freeform camera control. Breakpoint's lack of a holster option greatly changes how the actual traversal animations appear, as players climbing up or down hills no longer throw their arms out for balance. Watching the character try to traverse steep inclines while keeping his or her arms tucked in to hold the rifle results in a very different animation, though it doesn't seem to be unrealistic in any way. However, movement while in the crouch stance feels completely off. Trying to move at slower speeds while crouched results in an awkward tiptoeing animation loop that doesn't match up properly with the character's relative speed. This animation looks even stranger when traveling along inclines, triggering this awkward wiggle as the character struggles to maintain his stance. Wildlands doesn't suffer from this problem, as the crouched movement animation remains the same regardless of the angle of the slope that the player is traveling on. To help hide this lack of a unique animation for hills, the game camera will zoom in, with the player model being partially concealed, while the feet and ankles automatically adjust to the angle of the surface. It seems as though Ubisoft tried to improve on this in Breakpoint, but the end result does come off looking a bit odd, and the slow movement certainly could use more variable speed loops. In addition to the standard character animations, Breakpoint also adds in a few new moves. Players can now dive into a prone position, somersault, and conceal themselves in the mud to hide from enemies, all of which greatly help to add to the immersion. Next up, let's look at another highly requested subject, the vehicles. One of the biggest problems with Wildlands was the way vehicles were handled, and unfortunately, based on the vehicles I've tested so far, I'm not seeing much of an improvement in Breakpoint. In fact, some of the vehicles feel even worse now. Take the dirt bike for example. While the bike's handling is certainly tighter and easier to control, the actual quality of the character animations while riding on the bike feel unnatural and stiff, with rough transitions, almost as if the character only has a handful of reference frames to pull from. The general feel of the bike feels completely off because of this, making it less enjoyable to drive around on. The helicopters have received marginal improvements, like improved texture quality, though there's also a few odd omissions, like a less detailed cockpit interior, much slower rotor speeds, and the lack of rippling effects when hovering over bodies of water. The trucks and cars seem to handle a little bit better, though considering how much more effective the new bivouac fast travel system is, there's very few times i found that I need to use them, especially considering how frustrating it is to try to drive one of these through a thick jungle. You're typically better off sticking to bikes, helicopters, or just navigating around on foot. Moving on, let's talk about environments. As I mentioned before, Wildlands takes place in a massive recreation of the Bolivian countryside, complete with jungles, deserts, lakes, and snowy mountainsides. Breakpoint's fictional Aurora Island, however, doesn't seem to feature quite as much variety. The main island consists primarily of large farmlands, jungles, and mountains. There's a few residential neighborhoods and large tech facilities, but you'll spend a good chunk of your time moving up and down steep slopes and infiltrating high-tech military checkpoints. The central island is large, but not quite as large as the Bolivian countryside offered in Wildlands. It took me roughly 6 minutes to fly a helicopter across the island chains in Breakpoint, 
whereas the map in Wildlands took me up to 7 minutes to cross diagonally in its entirety. Breakpoint does offer a few large islands off to the side that help to expand on the playable area, but most of the map is large empty ocean space. Wildlands makes use of most of its space, though the various points of interest like mission objectives and shelters are spread out a little bit more. It's also important to note that while Breakpoint's map is smaller in overall size, it does feature more elevation and more density as a result. Military installations are often installed directly into the sides of cliffs, with several networks of tunnels and ladders leading into them, and enemy patrols can be found almost anywhere, making any location outside the safe area a potential combat zone. While this increased density doesn't necessarily make up for the lack of variety, Ubisoft does plan on expanding these island chains with additional episodes post-launch, adding in new areas like a volcanic island to help mix up the experience. If we take a closer look at the environments, Breakpoint benefits from much higher quality textures throughout. The textures on various surfaces in just about every scenario appear crisper and more complex than they appear in Wildlands, making the various jungles and swamps appear much more realistic as a result. Next, let's talk about the lighting. Just as I observed before, the lighting in Breakpoint is impressive, though does appear slightly less colorful than its predecessor. The skyline appears to always have a bit of a glow to it, which appears to be the result of the volumetric lighting interacting with the persistent low-hanging fog on the islands. When tweaking the weather settings in the photo mode, you can easily see the impact these various atmospheric effects have on the lighting, and how even the clear sky option has a colder color tone associated with it than the default color tone of Wildlands. Wildlands features a much warmer tone, resulting in a much more colorful environment, though I did find that occasionally the lighting matches up very closely to Breakpoint right before any inclement weather. Because of this, it's difficult to really say one is better than the other. They both feature impressive god rays and biometric effects, so really it just boils down to your personal preference. Shadows really haven't changed all that much between the two games, with some nice soft shadows for characters, decent shadow projections from the various environmental props and vegetation, and an impressive shadow render distance in both titles, though Breakpoint does seem to improve slightly on the annoying edge shimmer that appeared frequently in Wildlands. Now, let's talk about special effects, starting with explosions. As I noted previously with the beta, Breakpoint's explosive effects are a substantial improvement over the effects in Wildlands. Fireballs now appear to be rendered at a higher resolution than before, and are followed up by a large amount of particle effects in addition to a larger cloud of smoke and debris. Fire appears to have a more red and orange coloration this time around, and it also seems to mix with the black smoke more realistically. However, the vehicle itself doesn't burn quite the same way, and the fire effects fade much faster, hurting the overall presentation. Though Breakpoint does feature much more realistic water simulation effects that react directly to objects and characters. Prior character models even hold their gun above the surface, which is a nice touch. One of Wildland's more subtle features was its dynamic grass turf effects that would realistically press down grass in a player's wake. While a cool effect, it wasn't very noticeable, and no longer appears to be featured in Breakpoint. However, grass does still realistically bend out of the way of the player, and even blows more realistically in the wind, greatly adding to the atmosphere. Breakpoint also features a few unique effects, including dynamic ground tessellation for surfaces like mud and sand, and AMD's Fidelity FX, which smartly sharpens specific portions of the image to bring out details that are otherwise lost under certain lighting conditions. Finally, let's do a quick sound comparison. Which game do you think has the better overall sound design? Frag out. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. 
For the most part, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is an improvement when it comes to its visual design. The character models are more detailed, the animations, aside from the awkward crouch movement, are more immersive, and special effects like the dynamic ground displacement and enhanced explosions are all nice additions. That being said, Wildlands does still do a few things better. The game world in Wildlands is much larger, and offers more variety to players. The vehicles like dirt bikes and helicopters seem to handle more realistically, and because of the larger scope of the game world, the lighting feels more vivid and interesting. But what do you guys think? Do you like the graphical changes that were made to Ghost Recon Breakpoint, or do you prefer the design of Wildlands? Let me know in the comments section. Now I'd like to take a moment to thank my sponsor for this project, AMD, for not only granting me access to Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but also providing me with this amazing top-of-the-line AMD build. Complete with the new 3900X 12-core 4.6GHz CPU and the new Radeon 5700XT, an awesome card built for 1440p gaming and powered by AMD's new RDNA architecture, all of which was used to record the PC gameplay footage for this video. If you want to learn more about AMD's new tech for this year, be sure to check out the link in the description. And if you are in the market for a new gaming PC, and if you're planning on upgrading your PC soon, and also want to play Ghost Recon Breakpoint or any of the other big games this season, be sure to check out AMD's Raise the Game offer, where you'll get a free code for either Ghost Recon Breakpoint or Borderlands 3 with the purchase of select AMD Radeon RX GPUs, in addition to three months of Xbox Game Pass for PC. You can find more details on that offer in the description below. If you want to learn more about Ghost Recon, be sure to check out the full History of Ghost Recon documentary listed at the end. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.